Hello everyone, my name is Emily Rhodes and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Liquid Frameworks. Thank you for joining us today for FX eTicketing and FX EAM, one platform for streamlined success. I have to tell you folks, we are really excited for this webinar today. We can't wait to show off all of the exciting added functionality to the FX EAM module. There are a few new features around asset management, inventory, and procurement. We're going to show how job data can feed things can feed things into like preventative maintenance and inventory control. It's super exciting. But first, we have to start with some housekeeping notes. The phone lines are muted on our end to avoid any interruptions during the presentation today. We will allow time for questions at the end of the presentation. So if you have a question, please enter it in the chat section and we will do our best to answer it. If we don't have time for all of the questions, we'll be sure to follow up with you personally after the webinar. Next, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Joining us today, we have Matt Tana, the Senior Director of Product Strategy at Liquid Frameworks. We also have Matt White, Senior Solutions Engineer at Liquid Frameworks. And with that, I will turn things over to Matt Tana. Perfect. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We appreciate your attendance. We're excited to talk to you a little bit about uh, what we believe is going to provide incredible value to our customer base. Um, it's really the introduction of a series of uh, EAM enhancements that are meant to bring that module up to the next level. Uh, and really, when you start talking about using both of these, these modules together, uh, this is really where you get you know, the, the primary benefits uh, out of using one whole holistic system to manage your business. And so, um, really quick before we jump in, I wanna start with an agenda. Uh, first thing we're gonna talk about is the definition of EAM, it stands for Enterprise Asset Management. I'm almost positive that everyone on the call knew that already, um, but I'll give you the definition. And that will segue into the equipment life cycle. So I have a slide for me, uh, describing the different stages of the uh, equipment's life cycle and the features that are going to be coming into the product or that are already in the product um, to solve each of those stages. Next, we have some, ben uh, some benefits. So this would be the value proposition. You know, what value does it provide to you, the customer? Why do you care? Uh, so I'll talk you through some of that. Then we'll go through uh, the demo workflow that Matt White is going to show. I'll walk you through a graphic that kind of describes the different personas and uh, the different roles that they take and the different tasks that they perform. And then lastly, we have the demo. And then we're going to do some Q&A there um, at the very end so you can put questions into the, um, into the chat window. We'll make sure to either answer them on the call. If we don't have time, then we'll follow up with you. So what is enterprise asset management? So again, this may be fairly obvious, but the definition is, is the management of the maintenance of physical assets of an organization throughout each asset's life cycle. So again, maybe fairly obvious, but what, you know, what are the different phases of the asset's life cycle? And so let's get into some of those details. So the first phase, and really it, it, goes, it goes well before this when you start talking about design and engineering, but as far as what you would be managing inside of field effects today, it really starts with getting the piece of equipment. So for our existing customer base, there are some instances where engineering is taking place in a certain part of the business, but typically when you're talking about asset management, you're talking about the, the equipment has already been assembled and we're just going to procure that equipment. So as far as procurement goes, I got a little lag going on here. So as far as procurement, um, so you'll notice that some bullets drop down. The ones in black, uh, these are, this is existing functionality that we've always had since day one. Um, the ones in green, this is, uh, these are new features that we have that are delivered as part of EAM. And so catalog items and equipment, everyone on the call has uh, used those within the system, catalog item being non-priced items that potentially go on to uh, field tickets, rental tickets, return tickets, any types of tickets but ultimately that are billed back to the customer. And then equipment being your master list of equipment. So currently in the system, um, you, you can go and you can schedule equipment out to job sites, you can bill for those assets, you can look at revenue per asset, um, but we're going to be layering in some, uh, some additional functionality on top of that. And uh, one of those is purchase orders. So we now have the capability to issue purchase orders either automatically or manually out of the system so that you can procure not only um, rolling assets or, or stationary assets, but also uh, spare parts inventory and anything that needs to be ordered from a vendor. Second, you have the commissioning of the asset. So this is when you've already procured the asset. Now it's time to give it a once over, make sure that all the components are working correctly. 
Um, different people lay their eyes on it. You perform these series of inspections. You've always been able to do that within the system. But now we have this enhanced feature set uh, to track components. So this are parent-child relationships, and it can be multiple levels deep, allowing you to assemble assets based on um, other components that maybe would make that up. So an example of that might be that you have uh, a pump, and that pump may have an engine in it, and that engine has specific parts within the engine, and you can even break it down all the way down to every nut and bolt, right? You may not want to do that in a practical real-world scenario, but the system can accommodate that. And there's some nice visuals that go along with showing you which components make up an asset. Then you get to uh, then you get into operations. So everything during the commissioning phase, the goal there is to really get the equipment to a point where it's ready to start generating revenue for you. And so um, ultimately, the operations is where it picks up, and you actually start generating this revenue. So you have utilization and post job inspections, um, but also you can track profitability. So uh, with the enhancement of some new features that we have as it relates to EAM, you're tracking your projected uh, planned stock. To perform maintenance. They're also tracking the labor hours that go into the maintenance. Um, there are costs associated with each of these. And then you have miscellaneous costs as well. And so when you get this level of costing around your assets, um, you can ultimately drive towards your profitability reporting. So you have your revenue on your field tickets. You have your costs coming in from the EAM module. Ultimately, both of those gives you your profitability. And that sort of uh, showcases the theme for the webinar, which is using both flagship products within the same system, you know, what, what value does that provide? Well, profitability is a perfect example of that. Um, location tracking as well. Uh, this is getting to a very detailed level as to where specific equipment is located. So it can be located on a specific building, on a specific floor, in a specific room, it can be customer owned, it could be, um, you know, service provider owned, you guys could own the equipment, but very detailed location tracking so that at any point you can go into the system and you can see the current status of all your assets. Then we get into the maintenance. So this is really where the bulk of enterprise asset management comes in, because we're really talking about the maintenance of the assets. Um, one thing that we've had for um, you know a, a while now are PM schedules. This is preventative maintenance schedules, and then the work orders that go along with those PM schedules, and then work order tasks, and even work order items, so that you can track consumables that are being used. Um, some of the new features, and I'm not going to steal all Matt's thunder because he's going to cover some of this, um, but PM groups and PM routes, uh, PM groups being tiered maintenance plans to where you have uh, monthly maintenance, quarterly maintenance, semi-annual, annual, two-year, three-year maintenance, um, all of these being a superset of one another. So uh, we'll, we'll cover a little bit more of that a little bit later, but the idea there is that you can have multiple maintenance plans for a particular asset. Uh, PM routes. This is if you need to go perform uh, routed maintenance. So you're going out in the field, you're going to a customer site, you have a series of uh, fire extinguishers that you're going to inspect, and you just want to run through a route with route stops. So all that's included out of the box. And then you get into some of the more specific uh, features around inventory tracking. So spare parts tracking, um, warehouse, uh, bin level tracking. So row section level bin at the warehouse level to where it makes it very simple to do cycle counts of your of your inventory, uh, bills of materials when you're performing work orders, make it a lot faster and more accurate to perform the work order. And then you have your auto ordering of inventory. And there's a lot, there's, there are actually many more features. I couldn't fit them all on the slide here, but auto ordering, meaning when you get down to your safety stock, uh, you can automatically place or create purchase orders that go out to a preferred vendor. Um, and then you have some of the reporting there over, 100 reports that are included out of the box with EAM. Um, these are just the top ones that I sort of cherry picked out. Mean time between failure, uh, mean time to repair, and total cost of ownership. So the, the goal here is that we want to provide um, we want to provide more features which will, which will allow you to get a more holistic picture of not only the revenue that your asset is generating in the e-ticketing module, but also um, all the maintenance that's going into it. And, and ultimately, that's reflected through the reporting. Then we'll get into decommissioning. Decommissioning is uh, your asset is a point of either being refurbished or you're going to retire it. And so in this case, what you would typically do is um, you know break down the break down the asset, um, see if you can reuse any of the components, give them an inspection. If you need to transfer those components, you can. All the warehouse transfer functionality is also included out of the box. Um, and so just making sure that you can reuse any components before you ultimately end up 
uh, replacing the piece of equipment or getting rid of it. And so during the replacement phase, uh, this is really where you would start all over and you're issuing another purchase order to procure another asset um, that's going to replace the asset that you've decommissioned. So next, let's get into some of the benefits. So this is sort of the, you know, how does the, how do the changes and really um, wrapping up e-ticketing and EAM, how does that benefit you, the customer? That's really what this is describing. Uh, well, the first thing is that it eliminates inefficiencies caused by using disparate systems. So um, you may have multiple systems in place already to do these different processes. Your equipment has to live in two systems. Uh, it's possible that you're, you're using Excel or using paper to manage this process, which has obvious inefficiencies there around uh, inaccurate data and getting things done in a timely way. And so uh, I think that there are some very obvious benefits to you know, managing um, all your e-ticketing and your billing through the e-ticketing module, um, but also the same data that you're tracking in the e-ticketing module can feed asset management to where you're making sure that you're maintaining your assets in a timely manner. Uh, this sort of goes without being said, extending the asset life. Um, you know, the more regularly you take care of something, um, the more, uh, the longer that asset is going to uh, be profitable for you and generate revenue. That's ultimately what we're trying to get to, uh, in addition to being safe, obviously. But the, um, you know, being able to make sure that your assets are coming in and not staying out on site just because they're generating revenue, even though they may be causing unsafe working conditions or they're going to completely break down because you didn't perform some uh, maintenance plan, um, you know, getting those back into the office is of paramount importance to get uh, inspected by a mechanic. Net return on the assets, so uh, making your assets run more efficiently. If you can gain insights into why your assets are failing and how long it's taking to repair them and even potentially which parts are causing the failures, you can dig in and figure out that maybe it's one specific part from one specific vendor. But ultimately, we're all driving towards making sure that you're improving the net return on each specific asset. Reducing operating expense, operating risk and expenses. So there are cases where you go out and use a piece of equipment to do a job for a customer. And let's just take, for example, that equipment breaks down. So you're out on site, the equipment's broken down, it's not generating any revenue, or it has already generated revenue and even worse, and the customer doesn't want to pay for it. Um, they want to credit for it. And so these are some of the things that you can avoid by using EAM within the system. And not to mention the safety aspect. So, um, you know, moving equipment around and the equipment not coming back for maintenance, there are some uh, inherent risks there with making sure that it's safe to operate, which obviously can have these very um, catastrophic consequences around uh, safety at the job site and, and people's lives. Spare parts leakage. I was, um, you know, I've, I've met with several customers, actually quite a few on this, on this, um, on asset management, just trying to understand the requirements and, and what we we're going to be building. And one of the things that came out as far as um, from some from some customer interviews was there's this process that can be in place to where the mechanics are going straight into the warehouse to retrieve the spare parts. So this is obviously not a best practice because they're grabbing the parts and um, there's no accountability for handing those from the warehouse to the mechanic and him checking that out and checking those back in when he's finished. So you have this spare parts leakage and there's a dollar value associated with that. So um, having a system in place helps enforce process such that your mechanics, when they're going to perform maintenance on an asset, they go and they request parts from the inventory manager, the warehouse manager, the journeyman, whatever you, whatever you call it. And then they go back and they're responsible for actually going to the bin level, retrieving the, part, retrieving the inventory and then checking that out to the mechanic and then receiving that back after the fact as well. And then lastly, uh, cost savings, eliminating spreadsheets and manual processes. This sort of goes along with the top one, but um, obviously with any manual process, you're going to have um, data entry errors and inefficiencies with duplicate data entry. And so being able to track the system in one place and having one single source of truth has inherent benefits. So I wanna walk you through uh, just sort of a quick workflow here. This is really meant to demonstrate the benefits to using EAM and e-ticketing within the same system. So on the top, you have FieldFX e-ticketing. This is our flagship module that allows the user to go and receive jobs uh, on their mobile device, 
capture field ticket information that will ultimately be turned into invoices, capturing daily logs for what they were doing out on site, a supporting documentation for the invoices, uh, and you have FX forms for safety. So this is really the field-facing uh, application to managing your entire ticketing process. And then on the right, you have EAM. So this is where, obviously, we have preventative maintenance schedules, work orders, inventory, and um, all the reporting around those. So you have all these in the same system, and I want to show you a quick example. So let's just say that we have a field ticket for uh, a logging tool. It's The quantity is uh, 300 feet, and we're charging it at a $1.50 per foot. So this is the type of information that you would typically track on a field ticket. You put a ticket item on there, it says logging tool. You select a specific logging tool. You put a quantity of 300, and then the customer signs that. And then they, it turns into an invoice, and they go ahead and they invoice that. So it'll be passed over to accounting and then ultimately to your ERP. Well, in a manual world, in order to capture any sort of meter readings or other data elements that would potentially drive maintenance, you're tracking another paper form or you're tracking an Excel spreadsheet. So the example here is meant to demonstrate that just by going onto that same ticket item and adding two other fields, uh, connection joint threads and rope stock uh, corrosion, you can have the field user fill out another data element that says, well, this particular logging tool has damaged threads. Well, that can kick off a corrective work order. So it then goes into operations. So rather than having to track these separate spreadsheets to get that information, you track a data element or you track meter readings for your assets and that can all feed preventative maintenance for the assets. And so that's what you see on the right. It, it's sent into operations, it's sent to the shop, and it triggers a work order that can automatically be uh, kicked out and, and notifications so that you can know to bring the asset in for maintenance. So let's get into the demo workflow. Um, the first thing that Matt is going to talk about, is breaking down by persona, broken down by persona. Uh, the first is going to be the maintenance manager. So this is the person who's responsible for um, schedule, you're managing the preventative maintenance schedules, assigning the work orders, tracking the status of all the assets, knowing what is available within the yard, and also generating ad hoc work orders for the mechanics. So we'll generate a work order. We'll then pass it off to the mechanic. The mechanic will then go in and complete some header level information for the work order. And in this scenario, they'll issue a stock request. So let's just say they have a particular part that they need that is not available, has not been issued to them. And so they need to issue requests to the warehouse to go pull that and, and, and bring it back to them. And then they pass it to the inventory manager. Well, in this case, the inventory manager doesn't have that particular part in stock. And so they're going to create a purchase order. That purchase order goes to a vendor. The vendor delivers the stock, and then we have a stock receipt. And that stock receipt is really the point where you have a gain adjustment into your um, into your warehouse stock. And so the, the inventory manager will fulfill that request. They'll perform cycle counts, and then they'll pass it back to the mechanic, who will go and complete the rest of the work order. So they'll they'll tell what they did, which will be your work order task. They'll track the usage for the stock. So you have your plan versus your actual stock usage, and then you have the hours tracking for the labor. Lastly, we'll look at some reporting, uh, operations management, looking at reporting around TCO, which is total cost of ownership, asset profitability, uh, any downtime reporting, or performance reporting would also be included out of the box. So um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Matt White. He's going to walk you through the demo, and then at the end, we will circle back with questions. Thank you, Matt. So as mentioned, we're going to go through a couple different personas today. I don't have hours today to go through in detail of everything, so we're going to go through sort of an abridged version of EAM, touch on a lot of the high points here. So you'll see that the first role I'm starting in is the maintenance manager. And so as Matt mentioned, we have a number of out-of-the-box reports that can be bubbled up onto a dashboard. You can see a couple here between mean time, between failure, upcoming maintenance schedules, warranties, all this information at, at my fingertips. So when I log in for the day, I have all the details that I need, not having to go into a filing cabinet or an Excel workbook. I log in, get all this information. And as with all the data in field FX, if you were to extend the application, those work fields could be added to any report, as well as having these go out via schedule. So it might even be that every Monday morning, I get this week's schedule of maintenance that's required. But let's go ahead and dive into a piece of equipment. And so 
for today's use case, I just have an example truck in our, our, our world that is at a certain location. It's linked to a catalog item. I've got serial numbers, what make model, even down to the fuel type or a number of doors if I want. So a lot of information being tracked here. But you'll also remember all this data is already in field FX being utilized in the ticketing. But you'll see on the right here, I'm now getting some enhancements around equipment utilization, or as Matt mentioned, a parent-child relationship with equipment hierarchy. So if I wanted to expand this and say, well, what, what's connected to this truck? Well, it always has a utility trailer, and on that trailer is a generator. So I can see visibly from one screen what's connected to this truck. I can see all this information, drill in farther if I need to, but I know what's linked together. And ultimately, this is giving me a single perspective inside the system. But what else can I do here? So we all are familiar, for those of you on this call that have our e-ticketing module, certification tracking, equipment planning, utilizing this asset on a ticket being built out to a customer. All that information is here centralized under this asset. But we're gonna extend this world into EAN. And what that allows me to do is open up a whole new section here around PM schedules, meter readings, work orders. And so as Matt mentioned, we've taken some of the functionality we had today and expanded upon that. So that way you have more feature functions available so I could put my PM schedules into a group so I can hear to that what's going on this quarter. I'm not gonna repeat that next quarter. I wanna focus on that maintenance or at the end of the year. So I'm gonna do my annual maintenance. So that's at the end of the calendar year if I wanna schedule. But all of these are connected to my PM schedule. So I'm tracking you know, an oil change, or every 50,000 miles I have to do an overall on this truck, you know, or every engine hours I have to do a certain maintenance that's manufactured to meet certain needs. And all that is tracked against my meter and meter reading. And so we mentioned this early on where I'm collecting a lot of data in the e-ticketing world around billables, how much is this equipment being utilized, maybe pre-post inspections. So I take all of that and it would come against my meter reading so I can know what was my mileage on my odometer, how many hours was the truck running. And this could be coming from ticketing data. It could be coming from our FX form. It could be coming from our partners through IoT integrations where the data is just being fed into field FX. But all that information is being collected together, allowing me the ability to then initiate these work orders based on the schedule that's defined. And you'll see at the bottom here is I have a number of work orders that have been kicked off and completed that are approved, and I can track all this information. And so I'm able to come in here and very quickly drill into a work order. So from a maintenance manager perspective, you'll see I have a lot of information from my view. And so again, this could be configured based on what users logging in, what information that they need to have access to. So you might scale it back for certain folks, but I can see all the details about this work order, where is it gonna be taking place, what type of maintenance is it? But some of the enhancements here are on the right again, getting into work tasks. So we have this in our EAN module, but we're extending it with some additional functionality we'll see from our mechanic role, helping them guide them through their tasks day to day. But work order assignments, making sure that I'm assigning people to the work order so they'll you know, perform the maintenance that's required, but also being able to assign it against a work task. So that ability to say, well, multiple people might need to be working on this work order, and I want to assign specific tax, tax tasks after those people, I can do so. And then extending it even farther into our inventory or stock items. And so this is the capability where I know when this work order kicks off, what items do I have planned on it? If I'm low on my quantity, I could automatically send a request off for a purchase order, which of course would trigger my inventory manager to be alerted, which we'll look at later. And he could send that through his process and alert me when that's back and I can begin my work here. So again, all of this is in one central location. So I'm just moving this through the workflow. And you can see that I can do some quick things here where I can just assign a new person with a quick access to a button. I can assign a new person, what tasks are they assigned to. I could also print this CD out as a PDF if I need to. So very similar functionality that folks are used to, but enhancing it with quick, easy access buttons, putting things a little more easily accessible inside field FX ultimately. And so that gives me the capabilities as a maintenance manager to track, assign work orders out, make sure everything is being done quickly and efficiently. And so with that, what I wanna do is I wanna switch roles now. And so 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over into my maintenance manager or flip out of my maintenance manager role and I'm going to get into a mechanics role. So for today's use case, you know, I wanted to show something that we wanted to incorporate in the product where I'm going to take what I'm doing and running off of my iPad. But this can also be done from my phone. So I have an iPhone, Android phone, Android tablet, also from my laptop. But I'm going to do it from my iPad. So I can see as a mechanic, I would log in and have my home screen. So very similar to the maintenance manager, I have a specific home screen set up for me. And I see my tasks that are assigned out. So I don't have to go through digging for what am I supposed to be working on today. I can drill into exactly what I need to. I can click on my task. I can see some high level details about my work order, what, what maintenance is occurring, what assets it is again, what due date is it. So guiding me through the system, making sure that I'm not getting too much information, only the information that's relevant to me. And you'll see at the bottom, I have some actions that I can do. I can communicate back, I can edit this task. But what we've done is we've enhanced the ability to guide the user through the experience of, now I need to complete my work. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to complete my task. So instead of clicking screen by screen, of uh, moving around the system, we're going to guide the technician and the mechanic through. So first I'm going to replace my 13 quarts of oil. So I've done that. I can check that off on my screen and say complete. But I also noticed that there was damage to the oil pan. So I'm going to notify that here and be able to do this. So, and I'm going to hit next. Refill diesel tank, go ahead, complete that task, move forward. And you can see that it's just guiding me through my steps here and I can make comments. I can close out where I'm at and finish my task. But when I get done with what I'm doing, I can close everything out. The system will also remember if I have to walk away and go work on another um, asset or I take a lunch break and I have to log back in, it will remember what I've completed or bring me back to the screen of what step I'm on next. But it'll also prompt me that maybe I need to initiate a follow-up work request because of a comment I made so I can go ahead and maybe initiate that, that someone should go do an inspection on that, that oil pan, find out if the damage is severe, we need to do a maintenance. But I'm going to go ahead and close this out and complete that task. So make it very easy for the mechanic to come in the system, make the changes that they need to, perform the maintenance that they need to, but all within field FX. And just by completing this task, it would be updating my work order, sending out alerts and notifications to those that need to be alerted to this truck as maintenance has been completed. It could be going back into rotation to be scheduled on a job. All of that's occurring inside field FX as one system, making it very easy to use, but only giving access to what needs to be done. And so with that, that's really the mechanic role. It's very similar to folks that operate in our mobile application offline where they just need access to high level details. They don't need to get into the weeds of every little nuance in the application. This is a streamlined interface for them. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to my inventory manager role. And so with doing so, I'm now logging in as a completely different person. So we talked about that workflow before where we went from a maintenance manager, tracking that information, scheduling out their mechanic, the mechanic is performing his work, completing his task. But now as an inventory manager, I would be getting alerted to, you know, PO recs that were created. So when I log in today, I want to focus on things that are maybe newly created today. What open work orders do I have? My stock item inventory, where is that at? Do I need to focus on anything that's occurring? And again, these screens can be configured for what information needs to be reviewed. But I can, again, be no more than a couple clicks away from drilling into any bits and pieces of information. And so I can come in here. I can track my PO order. I can see what items are occurring. As, as Matt mentioned, we can track this against a specific vendor. We can, you know, release it. So that way I have to manually release this if I want to put it against the work order. I can track all this information inside the system. And all this data is reportable and rolls up against the work orders that they're initiated against, the assets. So we can track all that cost. All those details are captured here. So I can have that information at my fingertips at any given time. And so with PO work order, just giving me the capabilities to extend our enterprise asset management modules into that world where we want to bring all this information collectively into field effects so we can better manage our assets, the purchase that is against them, and what work orders need inventory items that maybe we didn't account for so when they are initiated, we can automatically put in that PO rec. But all that information around inventory locations have to live somewhere. So ultimately, these inventory locations are inside field effects. So I can have a location, you know, where is it at, who's the default buyer, 
all the items that are in it. But again, I can have reporting and details on this screen so I can know not only on a high level what items I have, but what is their level, where is their replenishment quantity, what, what's coming up for order. But you'll see that very similar to the equipment tab is I have my e-ticketing world. And so we've been doing a lot of work here prior to our launch of our new EAM product of quotes, jobs, tickets, tracking all this inventory within the e-ticketing module. But now we want to bolt that together into EAM and extend it even farther. So being able to track those PO orders, those stock items, but getting into transfer. So being able to move stock items from location to location, ensuring that someone has submitted it outbound, and then it's been received into the new warehouse by someone looking at it and approving it and reviewing it. And so all this is done within field aspects. So it's auditable, it's reportable inside the system. So that ultimately we have one holistic view. But the question may be, you know, how does this all link together? Well, again, as an inventory manager, people are pulling stock from the e-ticketing world, from the EAM world. So this gives me a central view of all the information in one location. As well as if I only have EAM and not any e-ticketing functionality, I would have the same tab here with all this information, giving me the ability to track all these details against my assets, my work order, my stock items, all of this would be collected in one location. And so that was just kind of a, a high level overview of our enterprise asset management module. And I wanted to be able to make sure that I show that. But of course, if there's demos that everybody wants to see at a later date, please let us know. Uh, we can dive much deeper into this as there's a lot of functionality that we don't have time to get to. But with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Emily. Thank you, Matt and Matt. Thanks to the Matt for taking us through the solution. Uh, now we're gonna move to questions and answers. If you have a question, feel free to type it in the chat section. And if we don't get to your question today, we will follow up with you later. Uh, the first question I have here is pretty easy. When is this available? Um, so we launched this at the beginning of the month. And so you probably noticed some marketing campaigns that have been, um, or some marketing emails that have been sent out around this. Um, we have customers that are actively implementing this already. And so, yeah, it's available now. All the functionality that Matt talked about is out of the box. Uh, there's also on the one slide that I had around equipment lifecycle and talked about the features. All those are included out of the box with the EAM license. So, um, yeah, it's available now. Okay. Uh, what is the plan to incorporate inven inventory into e-ticketing? That's a good question. So, um, when you start thinking about the inventory, I think this is one of the parts of the system that really we've needed in the e-ticketing module for quite some time um, because it allows you to uh, do some demand planning for when you're putting together your quotes. You can check your inventory levels to make sure you have things that are available. Um, when you're scheduling materials out to a job, you can make, make sure that um, you're replenishing your stock correctly. Um, so you can use it as part of the whole scheduling process and the quoting process. Um, on the e-ticketing side. So, and that's specifically around the inventory management. The traditional EAM, when you're talking about preventative maintenance schedules and work orders, those have really all been in, in place already. So there's not too much of an impact that would be different than what we offered before. Um, but the other thing that you could do is when you start talking about EAM and ticketing is tracking meter readings, uh, either on a, on a form in the mobile device or as a data element, a specific data field and automatically triggering the uh, triggering the EAM module to kick out work orders. Matt White, I think you sort of touched on this one, but um, the question is, does it work on a phone? It does, yes. Yeah. So I, I did my demo on, on my iPad, but the same functionality could be on a, a user's phone. Okay. Um, can I track meter readings in mobile? Good question, yeah. So I had sort of just touched on that, but just as a recap. so. Typically what you can do is there's a couple ways. Um, you can, when you're tracking your specific ticket item in mobile, um, you can put either meter readings on that. So maybe your meter readings are the quantities that you're billing the customer, in which case there's no need to even fill out an extra data element, it's just the quantity. And that quantity can go to billing and then it can go to asset management. Uh, you can track it as a separate data element on that ticket item. So the example that I showed around corrosion levels so you're putting your quantity in, but you're also tracking corrosion levels. And then uh, the last way would be to have a separate uh, meter readings form. And I've seen customers that do this already, um, but track meter readings for particular assets. It can be one or more assets that are tracked in mobile, uh, again, all while offline like the rest of the mobile product. 
and then once you get back to the internet, you sync it up, and those meter readings automatically feed into the meter readings object within EAM, and then preventative maintenance is measured against that, that meter-based PM schedule, and it'll kick out work orders at the right time. Okay, thanks. Uh, can I schedule mechanics to service a series of customer equipment, such as fire extinguishers? Mm. Yeah, I'll take that one. Good question. Um, so, yeah, PM routes, that's where you would use the PM route schedule, uh, the PM route functionality. And that's, uh, to get into a little bit more detail, you have this concept of route stops. Each route stop will have a work order associated with it. And so the system is smart enough to know that you have a particular PM route and you have these route stops for the different assets that are, um, you know, so you go out to a refinery and you're inspecting a particular asset over and over and over again. Um, the system is smart enough to tell you not only where the asset is at as far as specific location, down to the building, unit, space, room level. So it's very deep. It says hierarchy. It will tell you where the equipment is at. And then it also generates the work orders for the for the equipment so that you can, you know, walk, you can walk the location, use your phone or a tablet, and, and complete the work orders right there on your phone. So um, good question. Okay. Uh, can location tracking integrate with GPS systems? Yes, it can, and so that, that's a good question where you could be bringing that information into FieldFX from other systems and being able to display it inside FieldFX um, both for the EAM world and that can be utilized in the e-ticketing module as well. Okay, uh, we're plowing through them here. How, how does the EAM module integrate to ERP system work orders? So it really depends. I mean, I would say it's almost on a on a case by case basis. So it depends on really what you're looking for out of your work orders from another system. So I think we need to possibly dig in with the person who asked this question to sort of figure out what your vision would be for managing some of this information in another system. Um, you could have I could envision a world where you have um, you know meter readings coming from our system generating work orders somewhere else, or it could be that you have inventory that's needing to be pulled over so you can plan your stock out and, and use all that in conjunction with your work order within the system here, but the master list is actually managed elsewhere. So um, I'll take a note down and we'll, we'll follow up after the call on some specifics. I don't, the next question is, I don't see any way to manage large numbers of work order tasks. Will there be a way to edit tasks in bulk without having to click through multiple tasks? Yes, there will be. And so, the one example I used today was a guided workflow for the user, um, but there will be the ability that you could ultimately check off multiple items and do a bulk update against those, meaning I did all 15 tasks in one flow, and I just wanted to change the status to complete. Okay. Well, that looks like all the questions. Um, so that concludes our webinar today. Thanks to everyone for joining in. We will have an on-demand video version of this webinar available on our website soon, and we'll email that link out to everyone. Um, with that, have a great afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, everyone.